The Harry Potter movie adaptations are always ripe for discussion. They've been watched countless times by fans of the franchise, and whilst few people would argue they're better than the books, most agree the adaptations are pretty solid. But given how long the books are, the movies come under fire for missing out a lot of source material. This often had an impact on the plot lines more than anything else. The Goblet of Fire is an obvious example here, with the whole Quidditch World Cup segment being very minimal compared with the books. The characters also suffered as a result of a trimming of the source material, and the main character, Harry, is no exception. So in this video, I'm going to go through the main differences between the book version of Harry and the movie version of Harry. Now, I'm going to avoid plodding through each entry in the series and comparing them side by side because that would take forever, so I've broken this video down into several sections so I can put across my points more succinctly. So the first major difference between book Harry and movie Harry is that the book version is a lot more rebellious and much more prone to misbehaviour. This can be seen clearly if we compare Harry's first ever potions lesson in the book versus the movie. When Snape starts to question Harry in the book, he responds by saying he doesn't know the answer to Snape's questions and that maybe he should try asking Hermione instead because she has her hand up. In other words, he's cheekier, more rebellious. In the film, on the other hand, Harry just sits and takes Snape's abuse. He doesn't hit back. Those of you who've seen the deleted scenes, however, will know they did actually film some dialogue in which Harry suggests that Snape should ask Hermione instead, but unfortunately this didn't make the final cut. Some of Harry's exchanges with Umbridge also bring out this more rebellious streak in the novels. When Harry is caught trying to communicate with Sirius, his response to Umbridge's interrogation is, it's none of your business who I talk to. But in the movie, he's less aggressive, even when Umbridge slaps him around the face. Now these are good examples because they're direct comparisons, but I also want to draw your attention to other specific moments in the books that aren't in the movies at all. There's a great example of this in the sixth novel during the first Defense Against the Dark Arts lesson when Harry delivers a very witty, fast response to Snape in front of the class which results in an instant detention. If we then jump back a few years to my favourite novel, The Goblet of Fire, we see this kind of behaviour again. After Rita Skeeter publishes a nasty article about Hagrid, Harry is aggressive when he confronts her in the free broomsticks. He's very bold when he talks to her, he doesn't care that other people are watching him as he throws loud criticisms at her. Whereas in the movie, Harry never confronts Rita Skeeter directly, she's more of a mild irritant. Now I should stress here, there are moments in the movies when Harry has some rebellious dialogue, and again it's the exchanges between Snape and Harry that tend to bring this out. So for instance, this can be seen in The Prisoner of Azkaban where Snape catches Harry walking around at night, and in The Goblet of Fire when Snape tells Harry about Veritaserum. But the point is, they're much less prevalent. This more rebellious streak can also be seen in Harry's actions as well, and I'm going to focus specifically on Harry's behaviour during his lessons to begin with. Because in the movies, the only time Harry really misbehaves in class is during his heated argument with Umbridge in the first Defence Against the Dark Arts class of his fifth year. In the books, on the other hand, there are a lot of examples of, for want of a better phrase, mucking about. The most amusing example for me is in the Chamber of Secrets when Harry lobs a firework in Goyle's potion. Now he does this to cause a distraction so Hermione can steal ingredients for the Polyjuice potion, but it's still something I don't see the movie version of Harry attempting to do. There's also a couple of instances when Harry and Ron are just completely uninterested in their lessons, so in the Goblet of Fire they have a sword fight underneath their desks with two fake wands during Transfiguration, and in the Order of the Phoenix they play Hangman during a particularly boring History of Magic class. In terms of Harry's more serious actions, there's an instance in the Goblet of Fire when Harry fires a hex at Malfoy when they're lining up for potions, and the spell hits Goyle in the face and causes boils to erupt across his skin. And in the Order of the Phoenix, Harry actually beats up Malfoy after a Quidditch match, which obviously isn't in the movie adaptation because they just ignored Quidditch for whatever reason. But anyway, this moment is particularly striking in terms of how the book version of Harry compares to the movie version, I just can't see the movie version beating up Malfoy with his fists. Which links into another aspect of Harry that is downplayed in the movies, which is anger, and the Order of the Phoenix is a good place to start with this point. Take for example the moment when Harry arrives at Grimmauld Place. In the movie, he's clearly frustrated and annoyed at his lack of involvement with the Order, but he doesn't erupt into fits of rage like he does in the book. There's several lengthy paragraphs in which he just unloads his frustrations upon Ron and Hermione. The same can be said of the moment when Hermione suggests that he teaches defence against the dark arts. In the book, he gets really angry with both of his friends during this scene, but in the movie, there's just a transition fade and we jump straight to Hogsmeade and Harry's just mildly concerned about having to teach. 
and if we jump to the end of the Order of the Phoenix, following the death of Sirius, Harry again erupts into fits of rage whilst in Dumbledore's office. We pair that with the movie, where Harry's more in a state of shock and sadness rather than rage. A similar occurrence also happens in the Half-Blood Prince in the chapter called The Seer Overheard, where Harry learns that Snape was the one who told Voldemort about the prophecy, and again Harry becomes furious with Dumbledore. But this scene isn't even in the movie adaptation. And as a last example of this point about anger, in the Goblet of Fire movie adaptation, when Ron interrupts Harry's conversation with Sirius, there's an awkward and slightly tense conversation, but nothing more than that. In the book, Harry is furious that Ron interrupted him and throws one of the Potter Stinks badges at his forehead. However, it needs to be said again that there are moments when Harry rages in the movies, such as when he finds out about Sirius Black in the Prison of Azkaban, and when he tells Dumbledore to look at him in the Order of the Phoenix but these moments are not as frequent or as long as in the books. So not only is Harry more rebellious both in terms of his dialogue and his actions, but he's also more prone to fits of rage. He even gets angry when it comes to romance, or the absence of romance might be a better way of putting it. When Harry dates Cho Chang in The Order of the Phoenix, the pair of them go to Madame Puttyfoot's tea shop, and if you're familiar with this chapter, you'll know that this date is a complete fiasco, and Harry has a private rant about Cho after she leaves the tea shop. He clashes with Cho yet again, after Marietta Edgecombe, Cho's friend, sells out the DA to Umbridge. Contrast this with the movie, there's basically no conflict between them at all. It's Cho who sells out the DA unintentionally after being given a truth potion, at which point Harry just stops seeing her, unaware that Cho had been forced to tell the truth by Umbridge. And whilst I'm on the topic of Harry's relationships, there's also a key difference in regard to how Harry and Ginny get together in The Half-Blood Prince. You see, in the movies, there's a series of interactions between the two of them that make it clear they're going to get together at some point. These scenes essentially set up their first kiss in the Room of Requirement. In the book, we learn about Harry's feelings for Ginny purely through the use of the internal monologue. The reader knows Harry's true feelings for Ginny because of the thoughts inside his head. And the way they actually get together is much more spontaneous. Harry is the one who makes the deciding move. He starts to kiss Ginny. In the movie adaptation, she is the one who kisses Harry. This latter point is slightly isolated from my others, but once again it shows the book version of Harry being bolder and more assertive. This doesn't mean I think the movie version of Harry is bad. I actually think Daniel Radcliffe is brilliant, particularly as the series goes on. It gets better and better. It's just that the book version of Harry is more distinctive, more rebellious, more reckless. He's angrier, and I think a little more humane and relatable as a result of this. Let me know what you think of the major differences between book Harry and movie Harry down in the comments. I'd be really interested to know your thoughts. Is there anything important I missed out? Thank you for watching. Other than that, it's goodbye from me until next time.